Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. So my name's James Yarker, and I'm Artistic Director of Stan's CAF. And these are my colleagues, Jake Aldershaw's there, and Billy's around somewhere. Ah, oh, Billy Hiscoke's there. Stan's CAF is a theatre company, hence, I suppose, the costumes. Way back in, I suppose, 2001 or so, uh, we had a, a hit show called It's Your Film. Prior to that, I'd been a very provincial boy in the West Country and my parents were quite tight and never took us to any exotic foreign holidays. It would always just be a beach in Devon. As a result, I had the conception that the world was much smaller than it actually was. I sort of kept bumping into the edge of my world, which was the British coastline. Um, and so once we started to tour internationally with It's Your Film, I got a huge agoraphobia. Uh, we landed uh, in Hamburg with a van and a credit card and a passport. And suddenly there was this sense that you could go you could drive to Cape Town or to Beijing or Osaka or St. Petersburg. And we kept visiting these big international cities and very full of people, none of whom knew who we were, cared who we were. And that was provoked a fairly significant existential problem for me. I started to worry about my place in the world. And I wondered about how many people I shared the planet with. And I looked the number up. It was 6.2 billion people. But I didn't really understand what that number meant. And I thought maybe it would help me comprehend this number and my place in the world if I could gather 6.2 billion things in a pile and get a sense of how many people I shared the world with. And I set that problem to a group of university students. I suggested look at sugar or salt or sand. And they came back and said, James, it, it doesn't work. It goes down to become a powder. You can't get a weight average for powder. So I realised... We needed a substance that was of an even size, that was granular, was cheap and small. And I lived in an area of Birmingham with a very large um, population from Pakistan and Kashmir. And the corner shops were piled high with pulses and herbs and spices, but also huge bags of rice. And sat with my kitchen scales and counted as many grains of rice as I could bear to and weighed them and took an average and came up to, with a figure and I realised with a sense of awe and huge disappointment that in order to represent the entire world's population in rice, you require 104 tonnes of the stuff. So after a few days of walking around depressed, it occurred to me that it would still be interesting to see how many people lived in the UK. And I went back to the calculator and I did the sums. And at the time, that was uh, 60 million people, which was one tonne of rice. I thought that Looking at this one big pile that was the population of the UK would be interesting, but only diverting for a moment or two. And I began to think, well, but it would be interesting to see how many of those lived in Birmingham versus London versus, say, Swansea. Uh, how many of them are in prison? How many of them are police officers trying to catch the people to put them in prison? How many judges are there deciding whether or not they should go into prison? How many prison officers look after them when they're in the prison? And, and how many men are there in prison versus how many women that are there in prison? And, how many of those women have children and are those children in prison with them or at home? And, and suddenly this show un, unrolled in front of me. So we persuaded an art centre to help us present this show. The show became called Of All the People in All the World. The show proved very popular. It was presented in the foyer of Warwick Art Centre, which is a cut-through route for students trying to get from their lectures as quickly as possible to the students' union, trying to avoid contacting any art. Some were suspicious that we were just trying to flog them rice, that it was some promotional activity. <laughs> but those that overcame that um, seemed to be very engaged with the show if they came from the engineering department because there was stuff in it about cars and they were interested in it if they came from the history department because there was stuff in it about the war. And it's a cross-curricular project. We went to the Wellcome Trust and persuaded them to give us some money to do the show a few more times but in schools. We got the students to do the research and to do the measuring and the weighing out. Students understand it because it's very, very straightforward. So even the youngest children understand one grain equals one person. You can see changes over time. Obviously, proportions and scale is at the heart of it. Simple things like if you're using balance scales, you've got all maths bound, the hundreds and the fifties and the twenties and the tens and the fives and the twos and the ones to create. As you get more sophisticated, you get into problems of the proportion of submariners in Germany that survived the war and you're told that well 75% were killed you have to work back from there to find out what the whole number was there's a big demand for the show to present um, ecological issues but ecological issues are quite difficult to pin down to people 
and carbon dioxide is a difficult thing to convert into people. So thought, well, if we use the, a citizen from a country that generates the smallest amount of carbon dioxide per capita as our unit, it requires a bit of nimble digital uh, tinkering to, to twist things around to make them uh, fulfill the, the rule of it being one grain per person. Engagement with the show on an educational level um, varies. Uh, obviously, art centres which we visit are very keen that they get schools groups to come in. And the level of that engagement ranges from there's a worksheet which encourages students to find the biggest pile, the smallest pile, piles that show a change over time, uh, the pile that makes them laugh, the one that surprises them the most, the one they find most upsetting, the ones that are missing that they would like to add to the show. Um, but then there are also workshops which get, um, get more engaged with that, which take place often in a separate space adjoining the main presentation. Um, and these can be a set of scales per small group and a container with rice in it. Some groups try and count them all and some come to the mathematical weight equivalent very quickly. And the small groups as team have to go around all these piles and apply the correct label to the correct pile. As you'll see, the, um, the show adapts to context. Here we've got stuff about Swansea, we've got stuff about maths teachers, uh, we've got stuff that's happening in the world. It's an opportunity in schools for the whole school to come together to work on a project. So uh, there are opportunities for the history teachers to put their stuff in and the geography teachers to contribute their thing. But when it does work, um, it's very much worthwhile reading about it Maybe it sounds like an interesting idea, but when you're in the presence of it, it's an altogether more powerful thing. Going into staff rooms and talking about it isn't as effective as, well, I've brought you some rice to show you. There's no patent on the idea. There's nothing to stop you having a go at it. Earlier this year, we were in a primary school and year six presented a version of this show to parents. And we challenged year five to take this basic concept, the resulting project called uh, Smarty Mission. We used breadsticks to represent the world's tallest buildings, the mashed potato mountain to show Everest compared to other peaks around the world, and spaghetti that showed how far it is to the moon in comparison, and the distance they all travelled to and from home in the course of their academic year. Cabbage was deforestation, soups for the oceans, we had gold coins for people's remuneration. This rice has been going around with us uh, around the UK for a number of years now, when we get to tour the, work, the show abroad, they have to provide the rice. Uh, and part of the contract is that either it gets sold back to the supplier and re-enters the food chain, or it gets donated to food banks. I think that's one of the useful educational tools about the show, is about doing research and about interrogating your sources. So we, we use official sources, you know, governmental sources. We use NGO sources. We use textbooks, newspapers then there's a trade-off between how reliable you think a statistic is and how much you want it. And if you stick very much to the totally official sources, you tend to get quite dry data about the people who've died and the people who are ill. And it's kind of, kind of useful to be able to go out there and get some more fun, like Guinness Book of Records kind of stuff and get, get a bit of light, lightness into it.